Hello everyone, this is 3DX here with another video. In today's video I'm going to be creating a stylized radio. So let's go ahead and get started. Oh, and if you're new here, make sure you hit the like button. Alright, so I'm going to be using a few reference images. Um, but in this case I'm not going to be creating one of these specifically. I'm going to be using those just for reference and then making my own style here. That's one thing I always recommend is to find some images uh, either to get inspired or to uh, use those references to create your own uh, style of model based on the image. So I always like to start out by creating the main shape and keeping it simple. I think it's always good to keep things simple when you're getting started. And then as you progress, you can always make everything more complex by adding more details. So a radio like this one is actually relatively simple mainly because it's mostly geometric shapes and you'll see that I'm using mostly cubes and uh, primitive, primitive objects just to get this the main shapes done and a lot of the details I'm also going to add through uh, textures like in Substance Painter But any details that you want, uh, where you want shadows to happen, um, it's usually better to just kind of model those in, even though you can still get good details from using something like a normal map. Alright, so let's make sure I make the interior here where the cassette goes as well. Now, obviously, this is a vintage radio but in a stylized uh, form, uh, meaning I'm exaggerating a few of the shapes. That's usually what makes stylized models look stylized, is uh, exaggerating some of the shapes and also uh, using uh, non-realistic colors and textures. So I'm going to start to create the UVs and usually for UVs I just like to apply a planar map for the whole thing and then uh, find some edges where I'm going to cut them to actually unfold the model. And typically the best place is wherever you have near 90 degree geometry changes. That's usually the best place for cutting your UVs. And you also want to cut your UVs in areas where uh, the seam's not going to be too noticeable. Now for hard surface objects, that's a little hard to do. And for a few parts, I'm actually cutting them in half. These are parts that I want to keep symmetrical. So I want the UVs and textures to be uh, symmetrical in those areas mainly because I don't think there's going to be a lot of detail going on here which is why I think it's fine to keep those symmetrical and you're not going to notice too much that they are actually um, the same in both sides then I'm going to pack the UVs a little bit better and we're pretty much done with the UVs I just have to mirror some of the pieces here and I also like to uh, offset the UVs by one in the, UV, in the UV grid. Alright, I'm going to group everything and I'm going to use this tool for renaming. It's going to be a link in the video description if you want to use that. You can always rename manually as well. I duplicated the low poly group and renamed to high poly. And this is going to be my high poly model. So I'm mainly going to add bevels to some of the edges. I'm not going to take this into something like ZBrush. I'm just going to make the details here in Maya and export as a sub D model. So this is mostly uh, where I just add bevels just so that I can keep the shapes relatively intact but with a nice clean soft bevels
Now once you're done, you obviously want to export your models and import them into Substance Painter. And here I'm going to bake by name so that the normal map does not bleed between different pieces. And first I'm going to apply a glass material to the glass section here. And then I'm going to add the 3DX stylus material to the main shape. It's going to be a link in the video description as well for a tutorial on how to make that. I'm going to disable a lot of the layers on this one because I want this one to be a bit more uh, physically based. So that's not a lot of baked lighting. And I'm going to start to duplicate some layers to uh, add some colors to different parts of the model. And since this is stylized, I want to keep some of the colors pretty bright and just vibrant. And for the grill here, I'm just going to add a height map to it, just so that I can add those extra details. So some things you don't really have to model, you can just use height maps here in Substance Painter. Then I'm going to add a few uh, edges here where it's going to essentially show where the uh, model kind of breaks up. For some of the pieces actually connect and how, you know, the, the radio was uh, put together. Because usually it's made in pieces uh, and then pieces that are put together to create the whole thing. So I wanted to make that separation noticeable here. So that's a good thing to do always when you're making especially hard surface objects. Is uh, make it so that it looks like it would be put together in real life, uh, which is in pieces. Because things are not usually made as one whole piece. They're usually broken up into pieces which are then uh, put together as well. And then I'm going to keep adding some details using Substance Painter here, which is mostly adding a mask, uh, which has a little bit of uh, height on it. And I also want to experiment with uh, making different, using different colors for some of the sections here. always good to experiment. In this case I was adding an extra edge here but uh, I didn't like it too much. I didn't think it looked very good and I, so I just undid that part just because I didn't like it too much. And then I'm going to add something like the vents here on the back so that it makes a little bit of sense here. Alright, I think it's coming along pretty well. So the final thing here is just to add a few more details and it's pretty much going to be done after that. So anyway, if you like this video, here is the render in Marmoset Set Toolback. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you in a future video. Would you like to learn 3D modeling? Do you ever wonder how 3D models are made? Well, you see, making 3D models is actually not as complicated as it looks. Typically, models are made from simple geometric shapes, like a cube, and slowly transformed to create cooler looking shapes. For example, like this character. Hey, this is only a 45 second ad, so there's not enough time to cover everything. Click on the link below now to get started. When you click the link, it will show you exactly the steps to making 3D models from scratch. You'll see everything you need to know to get started, and by the end of the course, you will have made some really cool 3D models, like this room. Like I said, this is a short video, so I don't have enough time to explain everything. 
Click the link below now to see exactly how this is done.